Hi, everybody. It's Kevin Raver, and I'm back with another conversation video. And I'm very happy today to have Dan Steinhardt, otherwise known to his friends and most of us as Dano, uh, from Epson to talk about uh, some of the new Epson printers, specifically two new printers that are just being released, the uh, P700 and uh, P900. We'll talk about these printers, a little bit about the changes in the printers, and uh, probably before we get into that, we're going to talk a little bit about printing. Um, one of the things that uh, I've always enjoyed about Dano is the fact that he and I both have a passion for printing. Uh, somewhere in the near future, I would hope, thank heavens, I would hope, 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 uh, that uh, it'll be good enough that we can all stand in the room without six foot social distancing and uh, kind of you know, try to come back and, and do printing again. Uh, but for me, and I presume and pretty much know that Dano feels the same way. Uh, for photography, a photograph isn't a photograph until it's on a print. And uh, I'm passionate about printing, especially because I kind of came up from the day that if you didn't have a print, you didn't have a photograph um, before we got into all this digital age. But I think it's uh, truly amazing. And we're in the really the, kind of the golden age of printing right now, um, where you know we had such subjective color and subjective printing uh, back in the olden days because we had such variables such as light, chemistry, paper emulsion, uh, and on and on. And you know now we have these great printers that re do remarkable printing and allow us to you know print the full dynamic uh, range of the shot from zero to 255 and you know we can see things in the shadow areas that we were never ever privileged to see before. Um, and you know, over the last few years, I've been printing with the P800 and the 9900 uh, printers uh, from Epson, and I've, I just uh, I'm amazed sometimes, you know, how fun it is to make a print and immerse yourself into the print. And uh, just when you thought things couldn't get any better, Epson has decided to release two new printers. Uh, I would call them, and Dano can correct me if I'm wrong, but desktop printers. Uh, and I'll, I'll let Dan talk a little bit about this at this point, so you just don't have to hear me talking the whole time. But I'm very excited about these printers. I think there's a lot of things along the lines of what the P600 printer is, which I have in my home, and the P800 printer, which is down at my gallery, that um, they've uh, listened to users and uh, made a lot of changes. So, Dan, what do you want to tell us about these? Well, I think to answer your first question, we can refer to them as uh, professional desktop printers uh, to differentiate from you know, the retail uh, devices that you might see. Although some of those retail printers are actually pretty remarkable. <laughs> yeah. uh, but when it comes to uh, doing photographic printing, uh, you know, I say this every time we have a product launch, never in the history of photography, it'd be like a print like this. And sure enough, you know, it, it's happened again. Um, and, you know, you know, before we were interviewing or started this interview, we were talking about the old days and while well, Kevin's a little older than I am, <laughs> you know, in some ways, you know, in the analog world, uh, there was a certain craft to working in the darkroom and, and managing those things. And what I've seen over time is in the early days of uh, digital printing, when color management was kind of an oxymoron, <laughs> you know, <it> was, <laughs> everyone really honed in on this stuff. And, uh, and now with various ways you can manage images, I see a little bit of that craft, you know, leaking away. And, you know, so I'm not trying to help bring that level back, but the key thing you can say about these new printers and everything that Epson's doing on the pro side is this amazing technology that's designed to get out of the way so it no longer restricts you as a photographer. So yeah, there was always shadow detail, even in the analog side, it would just block up. In the early <laughs> days, it was like, yeah, I just went black. Today, all that shadow detail is there if you know how to manage it, you know sure. what to do with it. Uh, there's some shadow detail maybe shouldn't be there, <laughs> and that gets in the lighting and other things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, these printers, the 13-inch P700 replaces the P600, and the P900 replaces the P800, and that's the 17-inch printer. And the difference is uh, for those that had those printers or maybe were on the fence and, and didn't go into those printers and still have older generations, I think the big one is photo black and matte black is now plumbed through the channel, so there's no switching between the two. And I know that that you know, saves time and money and it was always something people talked about. Yeah, was... So that's a biggie. Uh, it has an expanded color gamut by adding violet. Uh, I 
you know, I've been working from home for 20 years and I traveled to LA. So working at home is no different. You know, I'm in my office and I, I have, I, I beta test, you could even say alpha test all these Epson printers. And I can tell you with um, the 700 and 900, we've added violet ink, but the benefit is, yeah, if you have those deep violets that are really hard to get, you'll see some of that. But the real benefit of that violet ink I found is you can get really deep, shadow detail in dark blues. That's where it really yeah, makes yeah. a difference. Yeah. Now it's always fun, you know, we always like to talk about what's the total gamut volume, how big is my gamut volume? And I always like to get it back to, well, what does it mean to me as a photographer in the images? And so, you know, I was looking at an image today from a photographer and it was that deep blue after sunset glow, they would always kind of black up and now you can get it. If you're in the right color space, if you haven't clipped it, <laughs> You know, all those kind of no things. Ifs. And I look forward to resurrecting our printing seminars so, you know, you can hold on to it. Yeah, I will. <laughs> because, you know, some people that, you know, it all looks great on Instagram, but if you're in sRGB and 8-bit and you've resed it down to, you know, 680 kilobytes, yeah, that won't print real well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, the other big thing about these printers that um, I'm very excited about. And at first I was like, oh, really? And then I started beta testing it. Uh, you can print from iOS devices and that's uh, an iPhone and an iPad. And yeah, in the early beta, the only thing we could really do was airdrop, you know, big 16 bit pro photo RGB files, TIFFs. And yeah, it was like worked out in the functionality because it works on something very similar to the current Epson print layout with some changes. Uh, but then I started printing stuff directly from my camera roll on my smartphone, because even though we all love to use very sophisticated cameras, you know, we use the iPhone for stuff. Mm -hmm. And some of that stuff is selfies and some of it's snapshots and some of it's okay. But printing from an iPhone, printing from any smartphone, yeah, you could do it, but it was, it was a pain. This is remarkably good. And, and you can work in a fully color managed workflow. Wow, so, I mean that 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 is exceptional, especially the color managed workflow. I mean, the color management, uh, right down to rendering intent and uh, size and centering and all essentially all the functionality of Epson Print Layout is pretty remarkable. And I, um, in fact, we can't see it because of this thing. I can't twirl. Let me let me show you something. He rolls in and he rolls out. <laughs> Stage <laughs> oh. left. <laughs> So I was uh, printing <laughs> with uh, the P700. Okay. And uh, one of the other features, and I was thinking, you're probably not going to see this on Zoom. Um, <laughs> but one of the, the other features is called uh, carbon black. And if you can see the reflectivity on yeah, here, yeah. It, it really only works with high gloss papers. This is a glossy metallic paper. I don't know how well this works out. Well, so you can almost see the metallic in it. Yeah, so. But what carbon black does, if you look right in this area, it takes blacks that the D max, if you're in an L star, I don't have an exact number of say five, it brings it down to like one or two. It looks like, it, it looks like old fashioned Oriental seagull. Oh. Or for those of a certain age, like Kevin, it's kind of like Siba chrome. Uh, so that's another thing called carbon black on this. It's only for glossy papers. It will not be that effective with things like luster or platine. Uh, but uh, that's another feature. And of course, you can work with cotton fiber papers. And, and it used to be with the, the predecessor, the P800, that is behind Kevin's shoulder at some point in his virtual uh, office there. And they were showing me earlier. <laughs> if you recall, you had to go through the front fine art feed. And there's a, you know, I think I demonstrated to you the Dano method to make that. Yeah. But for some people, it was a little song and dance, hop on one foot, you know, you know pat it slightly on the side. Uh, almost all fine art papers, you know, this is Hot Press Bright and, and uh, Legacy of Platine can now go straight down the top. But also, as I was mentioning about this mobile printing and, you know, we have big cameras and stuff like that, I'm like... Uh, I am Mr. Wonderful or the hero at home because I can easily do selfies and snappies. It's me and my wife on vacation. Where she always said I wanted to print. And it was like, oh, it's on the phone, you know, and I crank those out and it's easy and the colors pretty good. 
we, we've had this chat before about, you know, wh where do we get to the point where we make printing easy that people don't get intimidated by uh, the process? Because, you know, if you look at the dialog boxes that come out of Photoshop and, and even Lightroom, you know, there are so many things you've got to kind of go through a checklist. You think you're launching the Saturn V rocket to the moon or something. Um, you know, that why can't it be like our TVs these days where you just open the box, turn it on, and you get good color, and, you know, that's all there is to it. And I think this obviously sounds like a big first step towards it, for especially the people that, you know, want to, to get into printing and enjoy photography, but have been uh, weary about doing it themselves. There's also a, a new, younger, uh, for lack of a better term, influencer audience uh, that primarily kind of grew up with Instagram, who hasn't really uh, either uh, felt the passion of seeing their first print develop in a tray or see their first print come out of an inkjet printer. Um, and it's seen as very difficult and challenging, uh, especially if you're, oh, I'm working in Photoshop, and then, of course, I color manage there, and then I go in the print settings here, and then I go in the driver there, and I go to all the communications, and it's the pilot's checklist. Um, with Epson Print Layout, and uh, you'll see a very similar solution with Epson Print Layout for mobile, it's all very organized, top-down. Um, I like to think of it as kind of a, a cake mix, where if you follow the directions, you'll get a great cake. Can you go in there and, you know, put a few more eggs in there for your own special thing? Sure. Um, and people have the joy and the experience of great printmaking uh, without a lot of the hassle. We're, we're going to talk about that on uh, Photo PXL sometime in the very near future. Talk a little bit about why I brought a printer home and wanted to have a printer at home. And, um, you know, exactly what the Epson print layout uh, does for it in regards to making it easy to, to, to print. And um, it's, it's that point now where I mean, I use image print for my fine art stuff going off the P800 and uh, or the, nine, you know, the P800 and the 9900. Um, just because for that kind of production environment, when I want to do things, it, it just works. But this Epson print layout, it works from Photoshop. Um, in Photoshop, if I have a print there, rather than go through the Photoshop print drivers, and Dan will correct me if I'm incorrect anywhere, but I go down to automate, uh, open up uh, the, the print layout, uh, put it in there. I've already got presets made. So as you use it, you end up saving the presets for the kind of papers and uh, settings you want. And, you know, it's like, pull it up, see where it is, check that, push button, boom. Yep. And it's so nice now. You can also use it standalone, you know, if you've yep. saved, you know, saved the file, you can just open it straight into Epson Print Layout. And uh, the functionality on the mobile device, which I've been beta testing, and we're working out all the bugs for you. So Let me come back to the, the something you said in regards to the feed for the paper. Okay, so... Essentially, on the P800, uh, as we use it now, and if I'm putting a thick piece of paper in, uh, you kind of have to push a tray out and slide the paper in, as you call it, the Dano dance, and then close the tray, and it gets uh, you know, transported back up, and then you push the print button, and you get the print out. Now you're saying the back feed will allow us to do that without all that fuss. Is that correct? For most papers, not all papers. So for very thick papers and like poster board up to 1.5 millimeters thick, you, you still have to go through that uh, front feed. Okay, but that's poster board. And, and it works uh, in a very similar way. In the testing that I've done so far, on um, uh, most of the legacy papers and other papers, uh, it can go through the top feed. That's kind of fun. I'm talking about the beta, and things might change, but you know, it's your audience, so I'll get it. You know, in the driver, the top feed's called the rear. And I was going, well, and actually it's called a rear and other things. That's one of those, some things are just there, you know, so I, I'm, we feeding stuff, I'm feeding stuff back to, um, you know, uh, back to Asia, with, you know, our engineers and they go, well, there's the front and there's the back and then there's the top. But to, to them, that the back is where the rolls go and you can do rolls on the P700 and with the P900, you need an optional roll adapter and it's a new one versus the other one. It's a closed to keep dust yep. But the, what you're calling the rear is the top. I might lose that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes you got to know what battles to pick most likely. <laughs> so when you're using the uh, rear or the top, how right. many stack papers or can you just feed one sheet at a time? 
if you're using a fine art type paper, it is one sheet at the time through okay. the top. Where if you use a micro porous paper like premium luster, you can put, uh, you know, I, since we're, you know, haven't launched yet, where I believe you can put up to 50 sheets, uh, but the tray itself, when it comes out, can only hold uh, 30 sheets. Yeah. So if you put in 50 sheets, when it hits 30, you got to be uh, moving. You know, you know I, I print on uh, Epson, uh, the Epson black boxes at Epson Legacy uh, Burita, and there's a new Burita out. We should talk about that in a minute. But I've really fallen in love with the Plantine. There's something nice about the Plantine. Am I saying that right? There is no right or wrong answer. You know, we get this at trade shows. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we'll be going back to trade shows, yeah, but you know, right now, uh, people always say, what paper should I be using? You know, and what did they're looking for a recipe? And I always uh, kind of guide people and I'll get to your thing about platine. <laughs> I always kind of go, look, there's a decision tree with papers because there's literally, even from Epson, there's multiple kinds and there's so many out there. I always say, are you a painterly person or are you a photographic person? Meaning, do you like that softer, lower contrast kind of look? Or do you want the, you know, the, the full saturation and D-max? Usually, most people are one or the other, but sometimes across, you know, over. And then it's like, do you like it smooth? Do you like it textured? Do you like it glossy? You know, make that decision. And then you can come down with... Uh, two or three papers that might be good for you and to try yep. and test and live with. But the, I think in some ways, if you get too many papers and you're testing too many things, you don't start from those simple kind of things. You'll, you kind of go crazy. So, so the main thing I want to say is if you like legacy platine and the other person doesn't like legacy platine, they like this, there's no right or wrong answer. Uh, there is uh, I would argue if you're going to frame these things behind glass, why would you use a matte paper? Because, the glass, you know, gets in the way of all the wonderful textural qualities. Except if you're selling works of fine art, often it's not framed. Often it's, it was actually Michael Reichman that taught me this. And I watched him in this place in Toronto. People would come in for a print. He would give them white gloves to put on. It was all part of the tactile feel and expression of, it was value. Even though they put it behind glass, you couldn't tell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Legacy Platine, to me, is very interesting because it has one of the finest D-Maxes, best blacks on the market. Great saturated color gamut. But it also has a great feel to it. Yeah. And that it feels more like a fine art paper than a resin coated something or other. Uh, Legacy Barita is in the process of being replaced, as we're talking about now, with a Generation 2. And uh, it's a little early to talk about that, but it, there is some announcements about that coming. Good. Um, and those, of course, use photo black ink. And like I was showing you, Hot Press Bright and Legacy Fiber, those use matte black ink. And again, this was always, after you, you know, fed to the top instead of that other dance, you don't have to change swap inks with these printers. Do you, when, speaking of swapping inks, now when, say I wanted to switch to matte, and of course I've, I've never been, I'll, I have matte paper and like, I try to like bank up all the images that I want to do matte just because of switching over to matte was such a pain in the ass. Um, do you still have to clear things out or can you just switch it on a mat and not have to worry about anything going into the waste tank and cleaning lines? You don't switch anything. Just turn it on. It's just, uh, you don't have to select it. You don't, you know, it used to be a uh, fly down menu and it was grayed out. Why is it grayed out? Well, the printer was set to photo blacks and a matte black. You know, it just, it just works. Uh, speaking of the menus, uh, I, and for, let me, before I go in there, that that means a lot because you know I just avoided matte paper. I said you know I'm just going to kind of work with the you know the, the the photo black type papers and I'll just live with that. And if somebody comes in and wants a matte, then you know I'll wait till Sunday and go in there and you know just take a bunch of things that I wanted to do on matte and make those papers and pictures at the same time. But you know this may change my feeling about matte paper now because um, there are some lovely matte papers out. You guys have a very nice one that. You know, when I have to, I use it, but, um, you know, it, it, it might might make me want to print more on Matt. God, I might yeah. turn into a Matt person. Pretty dull, don't you think? <laughs> well, Matt dull, I don't know. Oxymoron. Or, you know, the, uh, <laughs> the, some people felt that they were you know, wasting a lot of ink. The reality was it was a very small amount, but it doesn't matter. You know, there's always that 
you would hear it and go, geez. And it was also the amount of time. Yeah. And then what if you, oh, I want to, you wanted to switch between the two. Well, that would waste a lot of time and that would, you know, put ink into the maintenance tank. So, yeah, you don't, it's, don't have to worry about that anymore. That's good, man. That, might, that changes everything. Now, one of the things that I really, uh, when, when I've seen the images of this new printer. Yeah. Uh, it's right over there. You can't see it, though. I can describe it. <laughs> well, we have pictures in the article that'll go with this video, so people right. can right. take a look at the pictures. But the control can I tell you what it looks like to me? <laughs> what? Big square box? It looks like a really cool, sophisticated home theater receiver. <laughs> because the, the, the tilting yeah. touch screen, it's flat. It's cool. Yeah. It looks cool. It does look cool. And, you know... But I, I love the fact that the menu screen does so much now. And it's and you can even preview. Oh, oh watch. I just had a cat walk across this screen. Cool. You can, tell we're working, you can tell we're working at home. I think he was uh, making a statement about you where the tail was headed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyway, um, this, the, the new control screen, the menu screen, is, is quite unusual. Doesn't it, it actually previews the image being printed also? You have um, options within the uh, this, and it's it's relatively large, four point three yeah. inches. Uh, also, the other thing is, you know, LCD uh, panels before, like on the P eight hundred, they were there, and a lot of people really wanted to drive the printer from there. But it was really about the driver would override that. Uh, on these devices, um, the LCD screen, the controls there are really matter, and you do want to set paper type there, and you want to set size there. But you can, you have a couple of options. One is It'll give you a progress bar. It'll tell you how much longer the print will take to finish, which is cool. Uh, you can set it up so that you can actually see the image that you're printing. Um, that's, if you're an engineer, you might go, well, why would I need that? If you come from the art world, there's a kind of an interesting reinforcement of, uh, yes, that's the, I did the right thing and it just feels good. Uh, and you can also control the, uh, the density, you have some controls to customize it the way you like. Oh, it, it's it's obviously, it's the next generation printer. Um, Speed-wise, it's also faster, correct? Not really. No? Okay. <laughs> uh, I was, I'm thinking of the larger printers then. And, the, uh, the 7570 and the 9570, which uh, those are the 24-inch and 44-inch that are in addition to the P9000 and the P7000. Those are two and a half times, well, uh, about two and a half times faster uh, than the, the generation before it. These printers speed-wise are pretty similar, but there's a, an improvement in the print head. And a lot of that speed on those other printers was because of a completely redesigned print head. Uh, this print head is it's similar, but it's, it's improved uh, basically because of the additional channel for uh, photo black and matte black and some additional coatings to help minimize uh, clogging. You know, uh, I'm going to be perfectly frank. And uh, why did I bring this on? Well, go ahead, because <laughs> you're going to ask me anyway. Well, I was going to, but you know, let's. Uh, I'm I'm going to speak in 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 your favor because um, Epson took a big hit a few years ago um, on print head clogging, and uh, specifically in in some of the different environments, you know, humidity wise and so forth. But I think starting with the 3880. And uh, what I've seen with the P800, uh, the reliability and uh, the clogging issue is uh, almost not there anymore. Um, the re this is something that, you know, I know bothered a lot of folks at Epson and they've worked very hard to it. But the reliability right now, at least what I'm getting out of the P800, specifically even the P600, which is, the you know, the predecessor, um, you know, I'm very, very happy with. But uh, have we seen, uh, can we look at more reliability now with uh, these two new printers? There, there are improvements to the print head. And, uh, and I have a tip for uh, viewers here that might be, uh, might be useful. Good. Where people who run into um, this issue in the past, hopefully most of it's in the past, uh, often are those that are not printing that often. Uh, and, and this would be a typical trade show thing. Oh, I'm having this problem. Uh, how often do you print? Oh, I print tons. How often do you print? Oh, you know, I'm constantly printing. How many prints a year do you make? Oh, I must make at least six or seven prints a year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not saying that's bad, but that's know. also a, a, a sign. The other one is, oh, I'm having this problem. Uh, where do you live? It doesn't matter where I live. Where do you live? 
Oh, I live in Salt Lake City. Ah, I live in uh, climates with very low humidity at high altitudes. Those are like the, the tough environments for a print. Uh, what I suggest for everybody who, in, in those situations, and I learned this when I was at the Santa Fe workshops, because that is a place of very low humidity and then high altitude. Uh, they purchased these very inexpensive musical instrument humidifiers. They cost about uh, five to ten dollars. They're little green snakes, and you fill them with distilled water, and you can put it inside the printer, you know, anywhere inside the printer, and that brings the humidity level up uh, when the printer is stored. Sure. Be sure to remove it before you <laughs> print. <laughs> <laughs> and for those uh, who are watching that have the 24 and 44 inch ones, they have much longer ones that are for double basses and, you know, an orchestra. Um, gosh, that for a relatively small amount of money, that solves a lot of problems. The key is yeah, yeah. distilled water. Yeah, sure. Distilled water. And you just pour it in and put it in there and that rate is minimal. Your, the new layout software, is that out or will that be released soon or where do we stand with that? So Epson print layout at the time that we are talking, which is April 20th to 2020. <laughs> there you go. Um, there's version 1.4, which I think you've been uh, yep. working with. The, um, the software, when it releases for the mobile version, uh, will have a, a different, it'll have some slightly different name or something like that. And um, we're always looking for feedback and working on how we can continuously improve that because we are, especially for people that are new to printing or they're intimidated by this other stuff, or in some ways, again, you're older than I am. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was talking with someone and I think there was a certain joy. If you're of a certain age, 50 up today, heavily weighted towards men than women who loved conquering the difficult color management, crazy software stuff. There, it was like a, look at me, you know, I can print, look at how many moves I can make. And that also led into, maybe this is just my opinion. Hey, look at Photoshop. Look at how many layers. I have 127 layers, aren't I? You know, look at me. Um, you know, younger, who cares? <laughs> you just want it to work. <laughs> so uh, color management, we just wanted to make it easier. So you can focus on making prints that bring joy to other people that, you know, kind of meet all of your, that kind of give joy to yourself about what a print is. And also the other thing that I've always felt strongly about is that the print makes you a better photographer. Now, of course, that's self-serving being the Epson guy. Sure. Of you know, course. Build, build, build. I will, uh, you know, being a photographer, <laughs> I, will, I will tend to agree with you there. But there's something about you're working on, oh, on Instagram, oh, you know, in fact, I even have some personal stuff that I would never print because it was technically not that great. You know, early generation digital camera, you know, high ISO, noisy, you know, bear array, blooming color. You know what, on Instagram, it was fine. You make a print, it's like, yeah. But there's something about when you make a print, you start seeing the image differently. You start seeing, oh, this could be better. I can improve. It's part of that craft and that that iteration process uh, that makes you think differently. You, you, to me, you seem to understand lighting better. You seem to grow, and you grow as a photographer when you make a print. You know, I have Art Wolf as a friend, and Charlie Kramer, and you know, slew of these guys. And I've been very fortunate, to, you know, throughout the years to hang out with uh, individuals like these guys. And um, maybe I'll even put Jeff Shuey in the in the mix. Um, where you actually learn a little bit more that good can be better. And, you know, you, you can always take good enough and make it really, really good. So, you know, those are the, the that's actually turns out to be what I see these days, not messing around with the profiles and all that, but just fine tuning the print, you know, meaning that print comes out and you look at it and say, you know what, I'm just going to go back and uh, open up the curve a little bit or change that a little bit. And, you know, finesse that that image until you get, a, you know, the, the print the way you want. And while you, it'll come out, you say, God, that's a darn good print. But, you know, if you understand printing, you start realizing it's a darn good print, but it can be damn, damn good if I really work at it just a little bit more. My favorite, um, uh, my favorite two things along those lines are for, uh, one from Matt Colbert. 
is one of the masters yeah, think, oh, he's a legend. and people go to his classes and they want to learn so much about you know managing files and doing all these things and number one he says okay you want the, the key to really understanding how to approach a file and color management and you know what you're trying to get on that final print yeah i want you to all put your hands up in the air stand up <laughs> well, how put your hands down and sit on your hands and look at the image and decide What's the destination? Where do I want to take this file? What do I want to do? Because we all, and you know, I'm there too. Oh, it's up. Man, we get this bad boy going, the mouse, and rah, man, tablet, whatever, and you just start, you know, and sometimes uh, I don't sit on my hands, but, uh, you know, I'll open up my personal images and I'll look at it and think about it at least for 30 seconds <laughs> before diving in. Uh, that might also be, you know, if it's a certain age, you love the, te the high testosterone file management. Look what I can do. Slow down and look at it. And then the other thing was, a uh, person who's I'm delighted that, you know, he thinks of me as his friend, and John Sexton. Oh, yeah. A great black and white photographer who only still to this day will work in the darkroom. But when you talk to him, and in fact, I was fortunate to shoot a video with him. It's on the Epson website, if you want to take a look at it, where what's John Sexton doing on the Epson website? Because it wasn't about Epson. It wasn't about technology. It was about the print. And he talked about, you know, the print is something to experience. The print is something to hold. And then he always says, after you make a print, for him, after it's dried, you know, <laughs> he lives with it for a little while. Yeah. He looks at it in different light sources. And, you, you know, he kind of gets the, you know, it's, a, it's this kind of living thing. And then you, you need to you make judgments and stuff after you've made the print. And it's through the years, and that's what he learned from Ansel Adams, that made him the better photographer. Well, you know, you, you've been to my studio and gallery, and you know I've got those two big print tables. Mm -hmm. And um, I do that. I tend to make a series of prints and um, leave them on the table. And you, you use the term live with them. And I think that's what I think is a, a good terminology. It's, you know, I try to live with them. And it's a... It, it's funny. Sometimes I find after two or three days, I actually get tired of, of one of the prints and question, you know, what, what was I really trying to do? And why did I really want to make that? You know, when this one over here is, you know, so much better. And, you know, it takes a lot to live with your print because like the darkroom tray, when we used to make a print, the excitement of seeing that picture and being able to hold that, you know, it's like, I did that. You know, and it's kind of like, I just mine, I did that. And then you realize uh, after a while, sometimes reviewing it, it's like, you know, I did it, but I don't really, I don't want to really admit that I've done it. <laughs> so you do learn to live with the picture a little bit. And I find that's a, a, one of the greatest exercises you can do if, if you're a photographer is, you know, uh, get to the point where you can actually look at your own work as if you were a third person and, you know, be critical of it. Um, so you reminded me of two things. I seem to come in Paris these days. <laughs> One was a discussion I had another video I shot with kind of my mentor, Jay Maisel. Oh, yeah. And he was talking about, you know, I said, Jay, what does the print mean to you? And this is a Kodachrome shooter from way back. And if you went into his old studio and his new studio, which is both wildly different and equally amazing, prints are everywhere. The print is. Not. And and he was talking about it and talking about it. And then he, he came up with this line that I always remember. It's, it was advice to people who want to become professional photographers or those who are really serious about photography. And he said, the print is how you can build your reputation. The print segregates you from other people when you give someone a print versus emailing them something or, hey, go to my Instagram slide. And I always remember that. And then the other thing you mentioned is you have these big tables. And uh, I think some of your uh, readers, readers, yeah, they read and also read, viewers yeah. of this, right? Well, maybe they don't have that much space. That is another one of the big features of these two new printers. Yeah. They're 30% smaller. Yeah, they are smaller. They less footprint. And uh, especially for my friends in New York City, um, it's a difficult time for them as we're taping this. But space is a premium. And to be able to, you know. I used to say the uh, the original 3800, then the 3880 and the P800, they were kind of the the largest photographic device you could bring home without getting kicked out of the house by a significant other. Yeah, and you could carry uh, it by yourself. <laughs> right. 
Well, now it's even smaller. So, uh, it, you know, you won't get as much grief from uh, someone else in the house. What, that, what's that piece of furniture doing in here? Yeah, I, that, that's true. Um, anyway, you know, we could talk forever about all this stuff, you know, and it's so easy and it's so much fun, especially with you. And uh, we do plan to do more of these where we can actually, you know, focus on a topic and, you know, hopefully, you know, get this social distancing thing out of the way and do something really um, significant. Um, I think it's so cool that Epson's still making printers. I always wonder, like, God, they've got this far. What are they going to do next? And to, to see uh, these two printers, specifically one of the cool things is the way they handle uh, the roll paper. So it's, it's kind of elegant this time around. Um, I think the big plus now is being able to be able to put your fine art print paper in, into a, 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 a holder in the back or uh, the rear or the top. And um, not have to fuss with all that front feed stuff that we've That's had. To do. A majority of papers, not everyone, but a majority. Yeah. Okay, you're, you're such the Epson guy. Always got to. No, I, 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 I know. I'm. I'm like they're looking at me. I can see that. They're going, that guy that you said, you know, and it's like one paper wouldn't go. Yeah. So, but for the most papers that we would most likely use under normal circumstances, um, but that, that convenience factor alone would be nice. Um, the reliability of it. Uh, so. You know, and I think the, the thing that makes it really special is we're talking not a huge investment. The, the, the T900 is, is listed at $1,295. Um, I'm sure, as always, you'll finally get to a day where you can see that uh, at not list price. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some incentive somewhere along the line. There always has been. And, you know, the P700 is what just under eight hundred dollars, if I'm not mistaken, correct? And the MSRP is seven ninety nine. That's U.S. I'm sure you have right. international. Okay, U.S. dollars for all you foreigners that are watching around the world. But uh, and yeah, that's less price. The street price will often be less. And you know, one of the cool things about any of these printers is if you get them, it's so much fun to set up. First off, printers always smell good when you get them, and Epson has this thing, blue tape. They must have bought a blue tape factory somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know the problem is making sure you get all the blue tape uh, off. And uh, but my my setup with the P600 was the easiest setup I've ever done of an Epson printer. And uh, I look forward to doing these. Uh, Photo PXL plans to do some reviews on these printers in the the, 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 the near future. We hope. Um, and w with Mark on board, I'm sure that we'll get a very thorough review. Um, but this is significant and. Uh, between the, the new large format printers that they made, which are just beautiful, and uh, these two desktop type printers, I think opens up a, a new world of possibility for all photographers that are interested in you know, making prints and taking their photography further um, and, and sharing their images. Uh, and you know, I, I really think that, and then I've, I've had some experience with this um, with friends that have now died, you know, Make a print and sign it, no matter what it is. Just sign it because, you know, those are worth something after you're gone, uh, more than just the print is. And it's it's a good good rule. Oh, yeah. um, a very well known photographer. I don't need to mention him. I was meeting with him, and we were talking about this same subject. And um, he met with a an estate planner, archivist. Uh, this is in New York. Very high-end person affiliated with museums and this person shot Kodachrome of every uh, amazing images that you would recognize anyone would recognize and it was always as analog photographers because I am I did lose my hair in the dark room we um, thought the original was the most important thing you, know, then you held on to those negatives because that was the most important thing even the the funny orange ones you know you never know and of course, you come across one of those funny orange ones now, and you go, oh, I don't know what to do with this. Most people. Kevin knows how I'm feeling. Uh, we were talking about that earlier. But his um, this person advising him said, a very famous image that you would recognize. They would hold the original Kodachrome. And they would say, he was advised, oh, you might get five bucks for that. But if it's a signed print, it could be thousands if not tens of thousands. Well, you know, look, we could sit here for another few hours, but both of us probably want to get dinner. It's cocktail hour. And um, I'm sure when the camera has not been on Dano or me, um, I know I, 
I've done a whole bloody Mary almost. <laughs> but you know what? That's you know <laughs> nothing like drinking. I was wondering why your eyes were getting a little smaller. I don't mind. <laughs> you know, I have somebody somebody commented one time and um hey, Raber man, you, you you must have great depth of field because you got F twenty two eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um I, I would look to have a much narrower focus sometime, but then you know I'd probably be bumping into things. So uh, that's the way it is. I live with my F-22 eyes, and I see the world different. Uh, Dan, I, I hope you've been safe and healthy uh, through all this. This is all, all for all of us. It's been a, a challenge living in the, uh, the new reality. It's kind of like, I feel like a Star Trek episode, that somewhere along the line, we were doing fine, and the planet went through a wormhole, and we woke up in a different time, because there's so many things that are <clears throat> different and challenging. But, you know, I think this is what we do. We learn to live with the, the challenges. We learn to live in the new world. And, you know, nothing's going to change my love and passion for photography. Uh, I love the gadgets. I love, uh, you know, always having a camera with me. And you know, I know you're one. You're the, you have an Instagram um, uh, page. And if you don't mind, I can share that. But, you know, you, you've done some remarkable photography on your travels. And, and you're very humble about it, which is pretty cool. But, uh, you know, it, it just goes to show the how much you appreciate and love the craft. Look for more with uh, Dano, because we're going to uh, hopefully get together and do some more cool stuff. Uh, and uh, We'll make these. <laughs> okay, you should do Jeopardy on that. Can't Here's a nice thing about Matt Prince. You know, they're, they're easier to see on Zoom. They don't reflect. Yeah, they are. They're great. Epson, thank you very much for allowing Dano to uh, visit with us tonight. That means a lot. Uh, it's, it's great to see advancements in the printing, even under these trying conditions. And uh, let's get back to printing. I know I'm enjoying printing while I'm still locked up here. I've made some great prints, gone back through a lot of files. And um, yeah, so with that part, I'm, I'm still doing. Uh, but really, I'm itching to get out and shoot some pictures again. And uh, that's going to be something I miss. So uh, Dano, any closing words from your end? Um, oh, I think it's uh, uh, print and print and uh, print. And let's, uh, I, I can't wait to do that in person. But I think we should do a road trip when we can go on the road. Yeah, but that would be great. We'll do let's that. Go to, let's go to this place. Right? Yeah, so, that would be fun. I'll meet you there. And uh, it would be a great time. Anyway, everybody, thank you for tuning in to Photo PXL. We appreciate it. We're trying really hard to enhance your vision and uh, uh, take a look at these new printers and uh, give it some thought about getting into it. It's easy, and you can count on us at PXL to uh, deliver some more information. Oh, look at the cat walking through. Yeah, I was going to say, is that a different cat? Yeah, that's a different. We have a couple cats. That's Ansel, yeah. named after Ansel Adams. Oh, it's a black and white cat, right? Yeah, it's so cool. Anyway, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Epson. And, uh, and we'll see you back here sometime in the very near future. Take care. Bye.